Hello everyone, this is Akash and this is my second video on YouTube. So this video will be uh, basically about using Git uh, as a tool for open source contribution. And usually the things that people get confused about while using Git, such as branching and rebasing, etc. So without wasting much time, let's get started. So first and foremost, open up your terminal. Mine is already open. And as you might notice, my terminal looks a bit different from that that you might have right now. So that is irrelevant. Whatever my terminal can do, yours can do as well. So uh, one more thing that I would like to discuss is that uh, I mean there are GUI alternatives for the uh, terminal-based application that we are going to use. I mean the Git. Uh, terminal application that we have has UI alternatives as well but the reason why many people like the terminal version is because it's simpler you know you have a set of commands for everything you want to do say you want to perform a task A you have a set of commands you execute that and you get uh, a quite predictable result while in GUI it's hard to explain things on public forum and it's quite time consuming so that is one reason why usually people like terminal as compared to GUI okay and same goes for the terminal version of G uh, git as compared to the GUI alternative all right so before we get down to the practical part of uh, our video should know a bit of theory as in what we are actually trying to do and what we are actually trying to implement Okay, so first and foremost, there are uh, three, I would say, uh, machines that need to be considered. One, I mean, you can call them servers, but to be honest, uh, I mean, that is just for the sake of understanding. Okay, so we have upstream, we have origin, and we have local. Um, origin, as you know, is your repository on GitHub. Okay. So you can go to your profile and anything that is yours is basically origin. Okay. So this, as you can see, it's Akash Malik slash XYZ. So this is origin. All the code lying here is part of origin. Okay. Uh, then there is upstream. So anything that is not yours can be a potential um, upstream, right? Here you can see this is Fossatia slash chat Suzy AI. This is not mine. Okay, this is Fossatia's. So this will be a potential upstream. So anything uh, that is not yours is upstream. And then there is local. Local is basically, uh, this is not a particular name to be used, but for the sake of understanding, this is your laptop or your machine on which you are currently working. So all the code that you change, all the bug fixing that you do, is usually this local uh, machine that you have so uh, then comes the branches that we'll be talking about so uh, in most of the open source organizations you are usually provided with uh, you can usually find one branch that is the master branch but in some cases there might be two there might be three but in most of the cases all you need to deal with is the master branch okay so this is the branch that usually reflects all the uh, changes that are being distributed by the product uh, sorry distributed by the organization as part of the product so this will be the ultimate source of truth so in other words anything that you do must have the changes that have been done to this particular branch right so if you're fixing a bug and say in that file a variable is named a and that particular variable has been named b in this upstream master then your code is inconsistent so you will have to make sure that your code reflects this change that master has so your variable should also be b okay so um let's go step by step uh, uh, that would be basically easier to understand okay so firstly uh, 
what you do is um, what you need to do is uh, you clone your origin I mean okay let's let's first understand how we get this origin and local in the first place okay so you can create a new repo all by your own that will be origin but then there is uh, uh, you know what let's just understand this for now like ignoring all those technicalities and when we get to the practical part we'll discuss this in a more detailed way so we would avoid repetition that way okay so uh, say you already have this origin and uh, you have cloned this and you are ready you have all this master master branch and all this right so what you do right now is you fetch the changes that are there on this upstream why uh, because you want to update your master branch like I said all the changes that have been done in this master branch must be reflected on your branch as well so you fetch this uh, the this branch the command you use use for that is git fetch upstream uh, this command actually pulls all the branches that are there on upstream but um, here in this case we just have one branch so it will pull that branch and if you check the list of branches that you have on your machine it will also show this particular branch with the name upstream slash master so as you can see the color uh, I've color coded this to show that this is in fact the branch that is on upstream this has been pulled I mean not pulled pulled is the wrong word right now so say this is all the changes have been downloaded to your machine but this has not been merged to your master all the changes that you had done to your code all the branches that you had are still there okay so this is a totally safe command no harm done great now what you want to do is you want to update your master branch that is bring your master branch in sync with that of the master branch of upstream so for that there is the git rebase command there is also a git merge command uh, but we usually don't use it uh, for open source contributions so we'll be using and we'll be trying to understand the rebase command uh, so here we rebase this master branch and all the changes that were there on the master branch of upstream is now synced uh, into your master branch now you are totally safe to branch out from this master branch or in fact uh, like if you want to do it the clumsy way you could even go ahead and change this master branch uh, but that is not the right way to do uh, a bug fixing or an implementation so what we usually do is we create a new branch uh, an important thing is that without syncing this uh, creating this new branch would not be recommended uh, this is because when you branch branch out from master from your local master uh, the changes need to be there in A uh, the reason being if you're working on a feature uh, and your master branch is outdated you might end up working on the wrong code and later when you sync your code with upstream you will end up with lots of uh, conflicts you wouldn't want that so what you do is you start working I mean all the syncing has been done you have created a new branch and you have worked on the bug fixing uh, and you are ready to push your code to your own repository okay uh, but before that you'll have to make sure that this current branch is again synced with that of masters the reason is that uh, if you say you took two to three days implementing your new code or fix a bug that, that was there and while you were at it uh, some changes have been pushed into master now when you push this code you will get merge conflicts of course so for dealing with that you will uh, you will repeat this process basically fetching this upstream master again uh, syncing that with that of masters and syncing a with that of master so this will be like rebase upstream master then go to a and rebase master uh, there's a shortcut way of doing it is basically rebasing directly uh, I mean re being on a you rebase directly uh, upstream master 
but it's up to you if you want to take the long way or the short way both will give you the same results when you're done you're basically ready to push your code right so the question arises where to push origin or upstream uh, the thing is that you cannot push to upstream directly the reason is that you don't have right access to that repository uh, the way it works is you will drop a pull request and the contributors or the maintainers will decide whether or not to merge your branch into that uh, into their repository that is upstream so pull requests can only be dropped from your own repository so what you want to do is push this uh, branch to your own repository so this will look like some this will look like this so basically you have force pushed your branch and your origin will now reflect this new branch this will basically be in sync with a uh, when you are done and uh, so now you are basically ready to drop a pull request to this uh, and there you go you drop a pull request to upstream and we are done so basically so basically what you have here is uh, this pull request when merged into upstream see if if your uh, PI gets merged basically all the changes that you have done in a will now be reflected into master so the next time when you again start working on a new feature uh, again you'll repeat this process so this whole cycle is basically uh, this is a cycle that is being repeated repeated every time you uh, work on a new feature or you fix a new bug so this is all now if you keep this whole thing in your mind you'll never get confused you'll never mess up your uh, merge uh, sorry you'll never mess up your commit history and uh, that's it so now let's dive into the technical part of this and uh, I hope that all the doubts that you have right now after seeing this diagram will be clear okay so uh, before making any contributions the first thing that you need to do is select an organization that you want to contribute to in my case this is force Asia and there are many uh, many repositories under the force Asia organization so I basically work on the chat Suzy AI uh, and the point is that this is my upstream okay this will be the repository to which I will be dropping my pull requests and of course I don't have right access to this only the maintainers do and I'm not a maintainer okay so then you uh, need to fork this particular repository the reason why you the reason why you do this is basically uh, fork basically copies all this everything here and drops it on your repository I mean it creates a new re new repository under your profile and like copies everything from here to that and uh, so you can safely go ahead and click on fork and it will it would create something like this oh my bad come on this so as soon as you fork your profile name slash that particular repository that you cloned would be th would be here and uh, something like this would be written under it that is forked from so and so organization as you can see i have forked it from force asia chat to zi now this repository is an exact copy of that repository and interestingly you have right access to this because this is your profile right so what you want to do is clone this to your machine so this is basically origin and now what we are going to do is we are going to create the local repository to which you will be making the changes okay so go ahead go to the terminal and currently um, work my uh, working directory is project slash gtalk you can clone your projects to anywhere you want i mean just anywhere you feel like so 
so I, I like to keep my things well organized so here we are and then what you will do is get clone the link that you just copied and press enter as soon as you press enter your uh, I mean the repository should be cloned into your machine and if you want you can change the name of the repository uh, as in while cloning I mean if you press enter right now uh, the default name that is chat Susie AI would be used for the repository if you want you can change it I actually uh, have a repository named chat Susie AI already existent on my system so I'll use a different name right? so I mean for the sake of understanding of course but you can go ahead and use the default name so I'll use something like temp repository okay and press enter and I'll get back to you as soon as the cloning process is done this will take up uh, I don't know a few minutes maybe so okay so now that our cloning is done you can so you need to change your directory into that new clone repository so if you are using your uh, primitive terminal this won't be shown so if you want to check your current working directory you should do something like this git branch this will show the repositories I mean sorry the branches that are there on your local machine so if you remember um, this the master branch of local is the one that is being highlighted right now cool so then uh, there are a few things that you need to configure before you can work right so the thing is uh, there is a concept of a remote okay so remote is basically telling your machine uh, let's say telling your local code uh, where to push and where to pull from okay so for now um, there is just one uh, I mean you can always change the names as you want but the only uh, remote that you have right now and that is provided uh, as a default remote by git is origin you can always remove rename add uh, remotes at your will so this is uh, say a, a name given to a link uh, which, which basically ties these two machines together so origin local local has this link of this machine and uh, it is by the name or, uh, origin if you want to see what is there uh, you can use this command and this will show you the link so as you can see origin I mean fetch and push again uh, let's not go into too much technicality but you, as you can see uh, this is exactly the link of the repository under my profile so as you can see this basically links my temporary sorry my local code to the to the code uh, under my profile hence this is origin I hope that is kind of clear okay okay so there's one problem how do we pull this code from upstream to local uh, I mean your local code does not have any uh, link to tie the upstream repository to that of your local repository so for that we'll have to add a new remote right so for that you go to the repository from which you forked your origin you take this link as you can see this has pause asia in place of akash malik so you copy this link then you go back to your repository and then you type in git uh, git remote add upstream so that will be the new name for this link as we'll be using the convention that is basically used so git remote add upstream and the link that will tie your local code to the upstream um, repository and there you go now if you check you have two remotes 
one is for upstream one is for origin we'll be pushing code to origin and we'll be syncing as in pulling code from upstream very well uh, if you want you can always uh, of course check the links as you can see here the links are there perfect so step one step one is fetching the current version of the code from upstream so get fetch upstream and it will start pulling the code from upstream it might take some time uh, um okay it's going to take some time you can skip over to the other part because i don't feel like pausing the video again uh, uh you know what i guess i'll have to pause this anyway it will take a lot of time all right so now we have our uh, upstream branches fetched okay so basically we are in this step right here so what we want to do is now sync the master branch of local with that of upstream master so what we'll do is get rebase dash i upstream master what dash i is used for is basically the interactive mode rebase like we talked uh, rebase is basically uh, used to sync the current branch uh, on which you are working with that of the branch that you mentioned here so currently i'm on the master branch uh, as you can see here i'm currently on the master branch and i'll do get sorry get rebase dash i upstream master <coughs> enter and the interactive mode basically pulls a uh, text editor for you so n o o p is basically there are no changes on your branch that need to be rebased so this will basically give you a message that uh, the rebase was successful you just have to exit that file using control x that's it so now your branch is synced with that of uh, upstream master with that <coughs> uh, you can check it i mean check the commits to verify that in fact it is synced so git log is the original command one line basically uh, shrinks those commit messages to one line so as you can see uh, this is important right here because you can see your head master is the local I mean local master so it is on uh, this particular commit okay your upstream master is also on this particular commit so basically they are in sync now you can see that origin master and origin head they are basically on a commit that is old right so this is behind this so uh, if you want to see how this update works if i push this current version of master to origin this uh, this part will come right on top of here if you want get push origin master force some time and it should be updated now you can see headmaster upstream master origin master all of them are in sync so <coughs> that was kind of irrelevant but I was just trying to show you how that uh, this list of commits can be used to understand which uh, I mean which of the branches are outdated which one is uh, behind commits and all that okay so now you can safely branch out so there are many commands for creating new branches i usually use the one uh, known as checkout dash b dash b is important dash b creates a new branch if that branch does not exist checkout is used to uh, switch between different branches if you have branch a and branch b you can switch between two branches 
so I'll create a new branch named uh, I actually have uh, found out a uh, I mean I'll be refactoring a component in this repository to actually show you how the uh, issue tracker and pull requests work so I'll actually work on a genuine bug right now so git checkout dash b uh, redux I don't know, message composer so as you can see I was currently on master branch from there I created a new branch which is this so now uh, the branch list should show two branches and the highlighted one should be uh, the one that I created okay so basically now uh, I am on this particular branch okay I'll uh, I'll create I mean I'll, I'll make the changes I'll pause the video and make the changes then I'll uh, show you what to do from there okay before pausing the video I'll show you one important thing uh, this is the force Asia chat Suzy AI repository that I'll be working on right so this is the code that you usually see this is the issue tracker this is the list of issues that uh, people have raised uh, so this is the place where you want to start with so if you have found a bug or you want to work on something you press this button new issue and you give it a title uh, all the templates have been given here you fill in those details and you submit a new issue uh, okay so I raised uh, raised an issue a bit uh, earlier so this is the issue that I'll be working on when I'm done with that I'll show you what to do next so uh, I'm done with my changes and uh, actually I had one directory um, I mean I had cloned um, my repo already so uh, if you notice the change in directory here don't be alarmed this is the same thing I just had an old directory so I worked there instead of the new one and the branch name is also different so that again is uh, just my personal choice of name so nothing to be alarmed there as well everything stays same now uh, as you can see i have uh, finished my changes but i haven't uh, added them as in staged them so if you type in git status you'll see the list of files that i have made changes to so this is the message composer right here this is the file and it is color coded as red that means the changes have not been uh, staged and it won't be committed so I need to stage them first so git add dot dot is not advisable but um, it doesn't really matter yeah so I'll add it now if you do git status it will be in green so they are staged now so if uh, I commit them I basically uh, make a checkpoint saying that uh, you know like this is committed to this point so if I can uh, just show you right here Check this out. Uh, so these hashes that you see here these are checkpoints so you can go back to uh, you know the uh, the state of this whole directory when this commit was made using this hash so what we are going to do is create another hash that is commit this commit these changes so that uh, in coming future um, if someone finds some bug in my implementation they can always come back to you know uh, some old commit and then again this is just the, uh, the general trend that open source follows so we'll come in this so there are again standards for um, commit messages so here one thing that is very important is that the commit message should be very descriptive and again uh, there is a trend that force asia follows at least suzy uh, chat ai follows so I'll go to my list of issues here and you'll copy this issue number and write 
this fixes this issue number then what I mean whatever you did in that fix so uh, message composer dot react dot js refactored and my number fix uh, I think refactored is fine so you go ahead commit this will run a few tests if uh, they have configured uh, it I mean configured the whole system to run the test then it will run it uh, in our case it is the ESLint test that usually runs so we are good to go now you can see that it is in green and if you type in get status it will show that nothing to commit work free clean that means everything that you have uh, done so far has been committed so you are good to go now thus uh, you can now safely push the changes to origin right so if I can just quickly open these uh, anyway so you can just go ahead and push it uh, now there is an important thing here when we are using this force so the point of using force is that this branch is not there on uh, uh, you know on your repository. Okay, so if you quickly uh, go back to your repository, uh, if you see this branch is not here okay this branch is named refactored message composer and it is not here in the list of branches okay so anytime uh, a branch is non-existent on your origin repository and you want to push a branch from local to origin you have to use force another reason for using force is that uh, if you have changed something locally and you want to push that change uh, to origin so it would need you to fix merge conflicts so if you don't want to fix merge conflicts as in uh, you are pretty sure that the changes that you have done on your system are full and final and you don't need any more changes or any more syncing with your origin branch then you can just force push it okay so this will be a kind of a destructive change as anything on your origin branch will be lost. I mean origin branch named refactored merge, uh, message composer. If it exists, it will it will be lost. Okay. Uh, it is like copy and replace command. I can like draw an analogy uh, between the two. Anyways, I'll just go ahead and push. refresh this you should see a new branch here here we go refactor message composer great now comes the pull request so we are done here you go back to this repository and uh, op you can uh, you can uh, file pull requests from many places but this is the simplest one I guess I mean open the repository to which you want to uh, file a pull request. I don't know what's the term for it. Uh, I'll use the word file. Why the hell not? So here's this option called compare and pull request. So you click here. Uh, if you just go back and read this, so this basically compares your repository to the upstream repository. And what you're going to do is compare the current version and uh, um, drop a pull request that's it so write in the title uh, here's the template that you need to fill in 
so this is the issue number that you fixed so it was refactored message composer yeah right so this was it and the changes that you have done okay so this is again an important part it, this needs to be descriptive so I'll basically uh, pull things that I had written in the mm, refactor message composer issue it's a simple way of uh, you know kind of a shortcut so grouping the import statements yes I did that replacing let with const yes I did that templates yes simplify function logic yes and minor optimizations in screenshot of the change uh, we don't have a screenshot of this change because we are refactoring um, and here the PR number needs to be written as you haven't filed a PR yet so the PR number is not there for now so what you need to do is create a PR anyway and a PR number should be generated right now so you go ahead and edit it that's it. Not this. Yeah, yeah. And you go ahead. Yeah, that's it. We are done. So as you can see, your PR is open. It will be in the list of PRs. Okay. One more important thing uh, here is um, I'll show you. Say you have opened the PR and say a contributor or uh, a maintainer has dropped in a comment mentioning your code say he is requesting some changes no, no. so what you, you what you would do is you need to fix those changes right I mean fix those requested changes right so you'll go back to your code you'll repeat the exact same steps okay you'll make all those changes add them stage them I mean stage them comment them and again force push them as soon as you force push them your changes will be reflected here no problem like you you wouldn't have to open another PR or anything just force push your changes to the same branch that you're working on and your changes will be reflected here and if you follow these steps you will never screw up your uh, commit history and uh, I guess that's it so good luck guys on your open source venture and uh, hopefully the video was not too boring and I don't have professional recording equipment so uh, sorry for the background noise that you have heard so far and uh, thank you for watching